McDonald's uses an event-driven architecture. Luckily for us, they've written a couple blog posts that details their journey into event-driven architecture. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper, explaining my thoughts on how they're doing it, why they're doing it, so we can give you some ideas in your own system. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. I post videos on software architecture and design, so if you enjoy those topics, make sure to subscribe. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So here's the McDonald's technical blog on Medium. These are the two posts that I'm referring to. I'll have a link in the description so you can read them. But the first one that I really kind of want to focus on in this first post just kind of really mentions their challenges because this is going to relate to how I'm explaining what they actually implemented. And the key thing here is that they're not new to event driven architecture, but I think the issue was is that they didn't have kind of a common ground, a common way that they were building things per this kind of paragraph here where they said they lacked a standardized approach. Um, and because of that, it led to inconsistent and operationally complex implementations. Uh, affecting availability, reliability, and data quality. And this kind of makes sense. It's a large organization. They probably have many different teams and how each team um, was integrating with each other and nothing was really standardized, which probably caused a lot of issues. So this is kind of their journey into doing that is kind of creating a standardized platform. So here are all the components that are part of their platform. I'm gonna explain how they all work together and how they solve different problems for them. So they're using AWS and they're using MSK, which is managed streaming for Kafka. They have a schema registry. They have a standby event store, which is Dyno, DynamoDB. I'll explain that. Custom SDKs, why they're using those. An event gateway and some supporting utilities and tools. So let's explain how all of these fit together. So the first component to talk about is a schema registry. And they mentioned in their challenges that they had data quality issues. And this is because events, as you're appending events to a stream in Kafka, they need to abide by a schema. They can't just be random data. You producer needs to produce something that consumer is going to be uh, understanding, can be aware of that can deserialize it. So the first thing to define here are what are the events that you're publishing and consuming and defining what those contracts are in a schema registry. So how do we actually use that schema registry? Well, on one side we have producers and we're producing and creating events that we want to append to a Kafka stream. We need to generate that event. We need to validate that it's actually valid against that schema. So what this means is the second component that they mentioned are SDKs. So what they have is a producer SDK that at startup of your producer reaches out to the schema registry, pulls out all that information in memory. So that way when we're actually going to, from our producer side, create an event that we want to append, we can immediately do that validation. Here's the data that for the event that we want to generate. Does it match the schema registry? Yes or no. Now on the happy path is yes, everything validates correctly. So what we're doing at that point is we can actually append that message to our topic in MSK, to our Kafka stream, and everything's great. Now on the flip side, on the consumer side, the exact same thing exists, is that we have an SDK for consumers that does pretty much the exact same thing. It's gonna go to the uh, schema registry, get all the schemas and all the versions for all the different events. That's the way when it's actually consuming from Kafka, it understands, okay, there's this event, it's this version, I know how to deserialize it because it should be valid based off the schema registry at that point. So I know everything in there is in the schema registry, it's valid. I can use that information to deserialize it. Now, if everything always worked great, that would be the end of it. But things don't. There's errors, there's failures. The very first failure that we're going to have potentially is not being able to validate the data that we want to create for an event against a schema. So when that potentially occurs that we're trying to do that and we have some validation error, we can't just publish it to the topic because that needs to be valid. So at this point, we're actually going to append that to a dead letter queue. Now in Kafka, this doesn't make sense to me why people even reference it this way, but really it's just gonna be a separate stream that we're gonna be putting messages that have failed, that haven't passed validation. So it's just a completely separate stream that we can deal with later. So this brings us to the third component that they mentioned, which is some admin UI utility. And that's because we need a way to manage these messages in the dead letter queue. So they have this admin kind of utility that then can go look at the messages in the dead letter queue Probably at that point, you can get what the payload is, what the message is, manually rectify it 
Once you've resolved what the actual issue is in terms of validation, then from there, you can then manually um, append that to the appropriate topic where that message, that event was supposed to go in the first place. Now, the second failure that can occur, which brings us to our next component that I'll explain, is just that there's a failure trying to append that message to MSK, to Kafka. So even with high availability, if there's some communication issue and you can't reach MSK, what do you do with that particular event that you're trying to publish? You don't want to lose it. So this is why they have their kind of backup event store, which is DynamoDB. So if there is a failure, likely they have some built-in retries, et cetera. But if there is a failure, then they go and persist that event to DynamoDB. And then from there, separately, they have a, likely a Lambda, I think is what they mentioned, that then will fetch that data out from DynamoDB and then be retrying to uh, append and publish that message back to MSK, back to that topic, once it's available. So this is kind of the retry mechanism. So we still kind of have our data um, solidified in permanent storage in DynamoDB. We're not losing it because uh, MSK was down or unavailable or we couldn't communicate with it. And we have this Lambda that's gonna pull that data out of DynamoDB and then try to republish it, reappend it to MSK. Now there is an alternative here, and I mentioned this in my Wix.com video where there are pitfalls to EDA which is the outbox pattern. So instead of having a completely different storage upon failures where you're gonna persist that event to, rather you're persisting the event to your primary storage, a part of when you're persisting and saving your business data. So you want something to occur, you save some state and you wanna publish some event, you need to do that reliably. So what that is, is persisting your, whatever it is, a document, SQL, relational database, but you're also persisting the event, likely serializing it to, for example, a table. And then from there, what you're gonna have is within that service, you're gonna have a separate publisher. This could be a separate process, separate thread, thread that's gonna be reading that event data from your primary database, construct the event, and it's the one that's gonna be publishing it to, in this case, MSK, or if you're using a message broker, et cetera. So this is another way to reliably publish events. So the last component to talk about here is the event gateway. And you can think about your own systems, applicable in most of the systems I've ever dealt with, is you're gonna be integrating with external parties. And they're not gonna have access to MSK or your SDK directly, so you need to provide them with some interface that they can send you this data that then maybe you are, at that point, gonna be validating and publishing to MSK as the example. So that is what their event gateway is. So from here, they have an event gateway, which is likely an HTTP API. However it's authenticated, I'm unsure. But at this point, this is what uh, external clients and integrations are interacting with. So when they hit that API gateway, you're converting that HTTP request and converting that, doing some translation to at that point, communicate with the producer so it can go through the normal flow of validating the data that's being sent to it against the schema registry. And if that point everything's successful, then it can publish that message to the topic. So it's doing this translation, it's kind of this integration boundary from external events using an HTTP API, converting those to events, contacting your producer, and at that point, it's inbound within your system. I really enjoy when companies provide these technical blog posts that give some insights to their architecture, design, their challenges, and their solutions. Hopefully this video provided some insights to understand their challenges and why they were doing what they were doing. If you have any recommendations of technical blog posts you'd like me to cover, make sure to leave a comment. If you wanna chat with other software developers about architecture and design, join my channel, check out the links in the description on how to get access to a private Discord server. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.